Keith, we all hope for an afterlife. Maybe some think there will be one. But what will it be like? The popular culture, visions of heaven are sound very boring to me. Mm. Um, and uh, if there is an afterlife, uh, what should I expect? Well, um, <laughs> if I'm if I'm good, if I'm sufficient to be there along with you, what are you and I going to be doing if I make it with you? I think probably most religious people would uh, feel pretty agnostic about uh, knowing exactly what it's going to be like. I mean, from the Christian point of view, Saint Paul in the, his uh, uh, letter to the Corinthians, first letter, chapter fifteen, says, "What is the resurrection body going to be like?" And he says. Uh, is my translation. He says, what a silly question. <laughs> we don't really know. Uh, so uh, the belief really comes out of a belief in God. I mean, that God will uh, enable each person to fulfill uh, the capacities with which they were originally created, but obviously in a, in a different way. So the question is, how different? The traditions which stress resurrection tend to stress the similarity Mm. Uh, they're, they're, it's a body, it's a resurrected body. So it, it sounds like something similar. But again, Paul in the Christian tradition, St. Paul, that is, uh, says, well, the, the, what he calls the spiritual body, he calls it a spiritual body, will be as different from the physical body as corn is from the seed. Well, that's pretty different, really. And one is caused by the other, but they're quite different. So the answer to your question is a lot of agnosticism, really. I don't agree with Tertullian, the early Christian theologian, who thought that all resurrection bodies would be perfectly spherical, <laughs> because that's the perfect shape. Uh, I think that's probably not true. Well, we, we, can, we can ask some specific questions. For example, there are some traditions which would have the individual merge into the cosmic consciousness and lose the individuality. Yeah. And so I think I can ask a question that has only two answers. Will I have, if, if I'm fortunate enough to be there with you, uh, it will, will I have recognition of my own personality or will we both be merged together in some amorphic uh, uh, soup? Yeah. Soup doesn't sound too <laughs> interesting. I mean, there are two major uh, religious traditions. One is the Indian and the other is the Semitic, the Abrahamic. And they're quite different in the sense that the Abrahamic traditions believe in resurrection, which I take to mean um, a, a re-embodiment of the same persons and even the same universe, but in a different form. So it's a re-embodied world. And the Indian traditions which believe in rebirth, in reincarnation. Uh, and part of the rebirth ideology or way of thinking is that release from rebirth is a good thing. And when you're released, then you're released from identity with this personality in this body. So there's two pictures of what happens. They're radically death. different. Uh, they look radically different. Though, keep looking, and <laughs> they begin with, as long as you're agnostic about each of them, yes. they become not so radically different because you say, what do you mean by a re-embodied body? I mean, how different mm -hmm. is that from rebirth, from reincarnation? Um, if you're going, could you be re-embodied more than once, a number of times, for example, in different worlds? And then you look at the rebirth view and you find that most of their philosophers say, well, you don't have to get reborn on Earth. You can get reborn in different realms. Yeah, I, don't, I would think that the, the critical differentiator is not the body in which you, you uh, have the rebirth, but rather the, uh, the memory or the, the, the continuity of my own personality. Yeah. Well, for both traditions, that exists. I mean, for the Indian traditions, you have that for quite a number <laughs> of rebirths, for, for quite a lot of your life, in other words. So there is, there is memory and continuity. And I think you're right. That's what it comes down to. Uh, there will be, after death, for all, virtually all religious traditions, some uh, memory, some continuity of character, uh, some possibility of, of realizing capacities that you have. Now, that, that is true in each tradition. The hard divisions come when you get further along the line, what happens ultimately. Now, that's when your cosmic <laughs> soup might come into play, and, and you might say, I want to dissolve into the the, self, the universal self, or, or not as the case may be. But again, it looks like a division. Um, 
children of Abraham, you know, the Abrahamic traditions say, we'll always be us. People in the Indian tradition tend to say, no, I'll overcome the sense of ego mm -hmm. and I will enter into a state of nirvana or wisdom and compassion and bliss far beyond this present self. And you say, that looks like a big divide. But again, you look more closely and you find, take just to take the Christian tradition, because, you know, I can't talk about everything at the same time. <laughs> in the Christian tradition, there's a, a, a lot of talk, an immense amount of talk about being in Christ or living in Christ, or of living in God. And uh, there's uh, one letter in the New Testament uh, called the letter of Peter, uh, which talks about sharing in the divine nature. And that's become a very important part of Christian mm. mystical tradition, particularly Eastern Orthodox. You share in the divine nature. So that within Christianity, and it's true in many forms of Islam and Judaism too, um, you have a more mystical sense of union with the divine. And you have to ask, well, how much will I have to change before I'm capable of union with the divine, of sharing in the divine nature? So again, when you're looking into the long term, things might be very different. You know? In the short term, probably, yes, when you die, <clears throat> you have memories, you remember what you're like, you think you're the same person. Mm. But as you go on, it's it's probably not a static mm. thing. I mean, you're either stuck in heaven playing a harp or you're stuck in hell having a bad time. No, progression is very important progression. concept. If there is yeah. progression, I think that's that's fascinating. I'd like to do, I'd like to understand progression. Well, I, the, in the Christian tradition, Gregory of Nyssa, who who is a registered saint, so not everything really <laughs> he said could be terrible, uh, did hold that life and he uh, is a journey into God and life beyond this life is it, a continuation of that journey. So there is a continued growth. And of course, you can see this uh, on the one hand, people who've had a very incomplete human life on sure. this earth will uh, have possibilities of completion in the life beyond. And people who have been tyrants and oppressors and causes of harm on the earth will also be able to progress. This was certainly Gregory's view, that they don't just go to hell and that's it, um, but they actually uh, learn what it's like to be and to suffer such pain. And through that learning, they can too come to share in the divine nature. Mm. So there's a possibility of progression for all beings who think and feel. But is the end point a merging into God, a union with the divine, uh, which, which sounds good in one sense, but if I lose my individual personality or sense of self, then it's like I'm not participating in it, in a sense. Yeah. Well, again, if you're talking about the end point, you know, uh, you have to be as reverently silent about this as you do about the nature of God. Because right. if you don't know what the divine nature is and you say, but don't worry, you're going to be one with it, it's not much help, you see. So you'll be as incomprehensible as God by then. Um, and you have to say, well, the, f the furthest goal is perhaps beyond us. And we can't understand it till we get a lot nearer to it. But it's not going to be less than what we are. Mm. Maybe that's what the important part is from a religious point of view, that, that it's possible just to go one step further than you are. And if you do, maybe there's the thought that your, your concern with your personality and yourself gets less. You might not be so worried that you <laughs> will continue forever. <laughs> so that, let's take it one step at a time. Okay. So, well, if you are still worried about that, <laughs> uh, then you know, that's what you get. <laughs> you know? But there's a possibility of moving beyond that. So I think all religious traditions would say, well, it's a good thing to overcome a sense of self-obsession, mm. to be obsessed with yourself. So one of those other fine lines religious people have to tread is between not caring about self at all and saying, let's just dissolve in the soup. Yeah. Or on the other hand saying, no, I've got to remain me forever. And between those two... Yeah, I, I, I sort of skew to the latter at this point in my journey. It's the latter being... The latter being wanting to keep you. myself independently okay. aware. That's where you are, Robert. <laughs> <laughs>